local population who had gone there to witness this, uh, you know, this act of insult to Ahmadis and enjoy that, they returned uh, very much scared at what they had done. And uh, for a long time this was the talk of the town that we uh, did wrong in claiming to have his body removed. He was a holy man and as such God had preserved his body. So it is not just a matter of superstition or uh, historical claims. We have witnessed such things in our present days that in some cases Allah so decides that the bodies are, are, are remain intact. I think uh, this also occurred at the time of those 70 shohada. One of them, you remember, one of them uh, pray, pray to Allah that his body after his death should not be touched by infidels. And uh, in the beginning, a swarm of bees protected him from the, the enemies reaching him and retrieving their body and uh, doing things, insulting things which they did traditionally to the bodies of the enemies. But later on, as far as I remember, when the, it was finally discovered by the Muslims, the body was absolutely intact. So we can find some other evidence from the history of Islam. <coughs> so the next question is that uh, the lady says that according to some people, slaughtering of the animal is a cruelty to animals. She says that why should then we eat at all the meat while we can live on vegetables? <coughs> but when they live on vegetable, do they know how much animal life they kill? at every mouthful, the bacteria and other insects which uh, live on this vegetable, they are destroyed by man by uh, applying of, of, by fumigation, etc., etc., causes chemicals. But apart from that, the vegetable they eat is also life itself. And uh, the scientists have now reached a stage of understanding where they cannot rule out of some nervous system, some sort of nervous system existing in the vegetable life as well. There is certain evidence of their behaving as if they possessed a nervous system. That evidence is so powerful that nobody can reject that. There is uh, a plant known as touch me not or chew mui. When you bring your finger close to it, it shrinks. But that is a visible sign. Apart from that, the fact is that every plant has uh, a course of, of behavior which uh, requires the existence of some nervous system. Because when the plant grows, there are two parts of it. One begins to grow away from light and then gets embedded as a, as a root into the soil and the other begins to grow towards light. Why? Why should the same uh, type of cells have different preferences and they should grow away from light? Now when you change the position of the sun and as it is changed also in different regions of the earth from north to south, the branches of trees also are differently patterned and they always tend to grow more in the direction of sun. Similarly, there are other similar behaviors which indicate that there is some sort of nervous system which we cannot detect and cannot trace, yet it does exist in the animals, in the, in the, in the vegetable, uh, vegetative uh, kingdom. So that is also a sort of life. Why destroy life at all? That is the question. We live, life lives on life. That is the plan of things. 
And when you understand the plan of things, then the, you go further and then you begin suddenly to, <coughs> to uh, completely understand the, the Lord's philosophy in this, that life of lower order is permitted to be sacrificed for the life of the higher order. That is the entire plan of ecosystem in life. So when this is true, below the stage of man, why should man be deprived of this? While all other species of animals below man are permitted by God and nature to survive on the lower, comparatively lower order of species. Why should man be deprived of that? If a lady or a man takes pity on a hen, hasn't she ever observed a hen eating worms or insects? Whatever animal you conceive, it lives somehow on lower orders of life and all birds do the same thing. And birds of comparatively higher order kill their own species of birds. So this is a general plan of things, nobody can change it. There's no reason why man should be accepted, <laughs> exempted, I mean. <coughs> so fourth then, question, please. Yes, the fourth and the last one from the lady's side is, uh, she says that uh, in the hadith of the Holy Prophet وسلم, it is forbidden for men to wear silk and gold. To what extent should this be practical? For example, are men allowed to wear silk ties and gold-plated watches? The question arises due to the fact that many Muslim men have been seen wearing these above things. You see, many Muslim men have been also seen to do much worse things. <laughs> Why do you emphasize only on this? The question, as far as the world is concerned, this question has been discussed in depth and in detail by earlier jurisprudence. And the majority among them, particularly I remember the Hanafite for instance, they permit the use of such metals or materials as contain a portion of gold or veneering of gold because the predominant stuff is not made of gold but it only carries an element. So what they say is that from their understanding of the tradition, it is not meant that the gold is uh, tabooed as something very bad thing, it will destroy something in man totally. It is done with some good purposes of course, but not so severely as to prohibit the use of all such things which contain an element of gold. So they say if you can call an, an ornament or anything, any, any, any article made of gold, then it is prohibited. If you say it is, it is not gold, it is silver plated with gold or something else mixed with gold, then it is not prohibited. So that is the verdict of the previous uh, jurists in Islam. As far as the ties are concerned, ties never came up for discussion. <laughs> because in those days people don't, did not wear ties. Personally, I should avoid all, this has been all my, my, my habit all through. Personally, I should avoid the use of gold in any form. Why should we do it unnecessarily? The color gold is not forbidden. But gold plating, I think, should be uh, avoided because then you get closer and closer to gold and that shows an inner weakness in you. You want, in fact, to wear gold and defy the instruction. And that is reflected in your excuses, like this is gold plated, this is mixed with gold. Why at all gold when other things can do enough? So never uh, ad adopt an attitude which is motivated by an inner uh, desire to sin, to violate. However small that desire may be, maybe it's in so insignificant or invisible, 
that normally you don't understand. 